Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I want to talk about something that we've touched on before in previous videos, but this time I want to go a little bit deeper into it. It's gravitational lensing. So let's start. We all know that the Earth's gravity is what tethers us to the ground, so that when we jump, we don't just float off into deep space. When Einstein came up with his theory of general relativity to describe gravity, one of the predictions included gravitational lensing. Just like how Earth's gravity pulls us to the ground, an object with high mass can have gravity strong enough to bend light. And this is gravitational lensing, it comes in three main modes. The most obvious of the three is strong lensing, which as its name suggests, produces the most prominent effect and thus most easily visible. When a gravitational object such as a galaxy lies in between an observer and a background source of light such as another galaxy, it acts like a lens, deflecting the light as it enters the gravitational potential of the lens galaxy. The result is a giant arc, or more often an arclet, as the gravity of the lens bends the light of the source around it. Occasionally, you might get some multiple images, which to me kind of resembles UFOs, and on some very rare occasions, if the configuration of the observer, lens, and source are perfectly aligned, then you might get an Einstein ring, appearing as a ring of light surrounding the lens galaxy as seen by the observer. Both the lens and the source do not necessarily have to be galaxies. The effect was first successfully observed by Eddington, which I previously made a video about. You can check it out here if you haven't already. And in that scenario, the sources were faraway stars, gravitationally lensed by our star, the Sun, but we could only see it when it was blocked out by the Moon. And it appeared to shift their locations on the sky. More commonly, however, gravitational lensing is lensed by massive objects, such as clusters of galaxies. These have a gravitational potential well of their own, and whilst you can get strong lensing by galaxy clusters, you are far more likely to see the second form of gravitational lensing known as weak gravitational lensing. Weak gravitational lensing, like the name suggests, is weak, and therefore it's not a visible effect. It might have been visible if galaxies were perfectly circular in shape, because then a foreground lens would distort the galaxy's shapes in proportion to the distance of the lens. See how they're tangentially aligned? However, galaxies are not circular, unfortunately. They tend to be elliptical. But based on the fact that we expect galaxies to take on all shapes and orientations, then by averaging over the ellipticities, we expect the average of the shapes to be zero. Then when a foreground lens like a galaxy cluster distorts background galaxy shapes, now if we average over the ellipticities, the average would be non-zero. By taking averages in concentric rings, we can expect larger values closer to the center of the cluster lens. Galaxy cluster lensing can result in a signal of up to 10% due to the change of galaxy shapes. Another similar lensing effect is known as cosmic shear, and actually it's essentially the same as weak gravitational lensing, but the effect is now distortions to the light traveling through the entire large-scale structure or cosmic web rather than a single object. And this effect is also much weaker, changing the shapes of galaxies by less than 1%. Lastly, the third regime, microlensing, which despite the name, can actually be easier to measure in comparison to weak lensing. In addition to the multiple images and distortions of shapes of the sources, gravitational lensing can also appear to magnify and increase the brightness of the source. Unlike in stronger weak lensing that occur over millions of years, the alignments of microlensing events typically occur over seconds or at longest over years. This is because the lenses and sources involved tend to be much lower mass objects like local stars rather than galaxies and clusters. As the source and the lens line up along the line of sight, the brightness of the source star will appear to increase and peak when they're perfectly aligned. This can be useful to determine the mass of the lens star, its distance, and its velocity. 
On some occasions, they can lead to discoveries of exoplanets that appear as peaks in the light curve. Unfortunately, in practice, microlensing is extremely difficult to predict, and so these observations are very rare, and they can be easily confused with variable stars that have a naturally varying brightness, and transients such as supernova. Gravitational lensing is currently the only known way we have to reconstruct the distribution of the elusive dark matter in our universe, and it also gives us constraints on dark energy too. That's it for the free forms of lensing. I hope you were able to learn something from that. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. Let me know in the comment section below what you want me to talk about next. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to support me, get yourself one of these Space Cat t-shirts, which I will put a link to in the description box below. And in the meanwhile, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.